somebody signed off on, the PO agent reviews that invoice, and then it goes to AP for process. That sums up that process. So not all of our invoices have signatures on them um, because the POs obviously are signed off on. Um, and this process is going to be more routinely adhered to it once SunGuard is implemented that will strengthen our internal controls with the implementation of SunGuard, which is replacing CSIU. Um, any questions regarding the other of these two? I'm going to turn the light on too, just to go my heads up because we're done with the slide there. So, so how, how do you verify and validate that uh, particular uh, job was done, uh, completed, uh, once you get the invoice in, and, uh, and again, it was brought up last month, um, who validates uh, concrete slab, uh, paint, uh, how do you validate that? And who is the responsible and accountable person that would put the approval on that invoice? I can answer that. If it's construction related or some kind of improvement related, it would be the director of operations. I do. Okay. Who approves the PO. And second, there's a second process of you're reviewing it. Again, when we're putting, putting together our financials. Um, so we'll see it on the before it's paid, the invoice is even paid and approved. And then you also are reviewing it on the back end. Okay, but on the uh, uh, accounts payable, uh, and again, there are numerous, even this month, that um, our treasurer, Mr. Maloney, had uh, stamped the, uh, uh, the food uh, expenses. But no one is approving and saying, yes, this is completed, this was received. No one's uh, assigning those particular uh, invoices that you're, you're sending to us, we are approving taxpayer money, but I'm not sure. I, I'm, I have some questions as to the deliverables. I think you're missing the PO process. Again, you're not going to sign every invoice. Why? Because there's a purchase order that is set and it's already made it through its approval process, right? I That's just, approved here. And it's approved here, and prior to that it goes, and then it's approved here when the merchandise is received. So at that point in time, we've received the merchandise that's on the PO, which has already been approved twice. It's validated. I, I, and it, it should be money. If there's no money in the account for a budget, it's not going to be approved. So that purchase order is validated. Are you, you don't see a copy of the purchase order. Would you, I mean, that's the question I would have to ask the board, is we send you, we give you a check, lit, check register. Do you want to see every PO associated with that check register? I would like to see a signature of the approval of the accountable uh, public officer for this school district, signing off on this, uh, on these uh, particular uh, expenditures. I am sure, or maybe I'm not sure, you are using the best practices in school district budgeting, correct? According to the Government Finance Office, Offices Association, are you? Correct. You are? We, we're, that's, I just explained our entire process. Okay, okay. thank you. Okay, any more uh, on the um, uh, superintendent's report? Oh, I'm going to say one thing, if you don't mind, with sure. regards to the budget, for those of you that come from the Montessori program this week, I made a little note for you. It's $10. It stands for $10 million that has to be spent this coming year. The difference between what it would have been in the 1990s at the standard, what I call the standard rate, and what we have to pay today. If we went back to the 1980s, 1990s, we'd be saving $10 million. That's the difference in expenditure, and it's every year. It's something else that we have to take into consideration. Are you talking about PEASERS? I'm talking about, yeah, pension PEASERS. Okay. How much we have to pay, what it would have been if it was back in the 80s and the 90s at 7.5%, we're paying 
That's the difference between the two. Based upon today, this is an estimate. Based upon today's salaries, in the next couple of years, three years, it goes up to 33 percent. So that 10 is going to be 11.4 million dollars. So basically, in 10 years, we're having 100 million dollars. Why was that comment directed to Montessori? Well, just so that you know and understand, because there's three of you that, that came up to speak uh, with regards to keeping the, the program, this is one of the concerns or, or considerations that we make is money that has to be spent uh, and where it goes, because you probably or may not have known that. Anything on the uh, solicitor's report? No, I would encourage members of the public to go to the Montessori Regional Charter School Board meeting and tell them to stop the lawsuits, and therefore that we would save $1.1 million. I would encourage all the Montessori folks to go there. Which is this Thursday, St. Patrick's. Stop the lawsuits. We'll save money. Um, okay, now I'd like to do board remarks, and then we can open it up to the floor here before we uh, get into our business. business. New business? New business. Oh, okay, new business. New business. Uh, I'm sorry, yes, Spring Legal Roundup. I think it's just an announcement that the PSPA uh, Legal Roundup is uh, set for, I think it was April 27th at the IU, and uh, just wanted to give you additional information that the, uh, our firm provides a free legal uh, service roundup uh, the day before. Do you offer CLA credit? We do. Uh, no. No. We all offer. Uh, Educational credits, but not CLA credits. Thank you. I, I just wanted to uh, mention that uh, PSBA is our official um, authorized uh, association that we go to to get the information. Um, I am going to be attending that separately. But, uh, and, and again, I presented uh, that we should be, and uh, uh, the representative from PSBA did get back to me um, last Friday, and she said that uh, she is asking um, the powers that be uh, to prorate the, the year uh, for the LEARN program. The LEARN program is $999, $1,000. But anyone, uh, including the executive team, uh, can be part of that learning program. Uh, they have courses and, um, for, for instance, the, the Spring Legal uh, Roundup, uh, you could take it at any time and there's no charge. Of course, there's, there's a charge for uh, travel, etc. But I did uh, send all board directors uh, a um, information uh, correspondence or an email if you didn't open it up, then uh, I would encourage you to open it up. Uh, I explained it uh, as to what uh, we can be doing. I strongly recommend that uh, school board directors, uh, and again, I went to a, uh, a training uh, with PSBA uh, in uh, December, I think it was December 7th, and uh, it's an excellent program. Uh, so this is what I would suggest for uh, next year. Um, if I can just say, I, I am an attorney and I will be attending for CLE credit the um, March 30th PSBA uh, spring clean roundup. I will be absorbing all the costs, so I won't need any, any help from the board. I don't see any reason why I couldn't get more myself. Very good. Now, I was just uh, reminded, Lou, that if you were to ask for reimbursement for the uh, registration or for mileage, it would have to be approved by the board. Are you looking for that? No. So you, and just the way any, any member that's willing to attend on their own, I think, is, is welcome to. Um, but it, just at this point, we have not approved uh, any expenditures for that. Okay. And I understand that. Thank you. Just like my campaign, I'm self-funded. Thank you. Um, okay. Uh, Mr. Kamelko, I would like to introduce this, please. Yes, sir. I'd like a comment first. I'm sorry. 